<clears throat> All right, so this has turned into a magical night because this is not was not a ploy, but we have uh, uh, we have no. the great superstar John Lombardo here. Let's have a big round of applause for John Lombardo. He's a living legend. And John was coming here for uh, Gwen Kears' birthday, and she stiffed. And John showed up anyways, and uh, he's so nice, he's so gracious. He's actually still sitting with us here, and he's going to talk to us for a half hour. That is so nice of you to do. Thank you very much. All right. That's really, well, you're really a, a real match. Well, thanks, Greg. I didn't realize it was as long since I've been here. 16 years. Wow. What have you been doing with yourself the last 16 years since we, <laughs> we should cover that? Cause it's pretty, up the pretty much the same thing. Same thing? You're still playing music? Mm hmm Still love people? Yeah. Still heterosexual, I'm guessing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of lady are you looking for? Mm. No, you like them all, all different varieties, right? You don't limit yourself on the air here. <laughs> <laughs> Now's your chance. They're watching. Well, I don't know what to say, you know. Well, you've had an illustrious career. Thank and you. And we're going to work on that book with you, your autobiography, Nobody Likes a Wanker. How'd you come up with that title, Nobody Likes a Wanker? It's kind of a... Well, I didn't really come up with it as a title. I thought I just said it once, and you said, that's a great title or something. And then you said it was a great title, though. You it agree with me. It is pretty good. It is pretty good. We, we kind of like Maniac. Maniac, yeah. What about Maniac? Do you like that? John Lombardo... Maniac. maniac wanker. No, because maniac kind of suggests. What was that movie? Was it Flash Dance or something where the people were in the torn? Oh, you mean mall maniac, maniac? That could be yeah, the yeah. cover. Of love. It's maniac. You're just pulling the water down like that. Oh yeah, yeah right. It, that didn't occur to me until you said it. But uh, I mean, it just—it's just the. Uh, it makes plus there's sense a, because well, plus there's a Buffalo Grateful Dead tribute band. Oh God, the Maniacs! Yeah. You're right. You don't want that. No, I no. Don't. I just thought maybe because you were in the Ten Thousand Maniacs, you named the Ten Thousand Maniacs, and because you're a maniac, therefore <laughs> John Lombardo <laughs> Maniac with a nice would photo of you on the cover yes. would make a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? A lot of your friends around town will, would think of you as a maniac because of the band and because you're a maniac. Yeah, but you see, the whole the whole choice of 10,000 Maniacs was sort of an ironic thing. Do you know what I mean? The opposite, yeah. We're, we're actually a, a folk music group. Exactly. We don't play heavy metal. Right. We don't, we don't play death metal like you think when you hear 10,000 10, yeah. Maniacs are yeah. coming to town this week. <laughs> Rock on. One time we were playing a gig in Athens, Georgia, and we pull up to this club the 40 watt club and there's all these people waiting for us that are like not really goths but sort of pre-goth like rough looking people and we pulled up and they were all disappointed like who are you guys and we said oh we're playing here tonight and they said oh man we thought it was going to be millions of dead cops <laughs> <laughs> we love that band millions of dead cops yeah right so oh that's needless frustrating. to say so sometimes yeah with that ten thousand maniacs name you'd play all during your your many years on and off with them you'd play and people would be thinking oh the beginning it was just the beginning yeah only at the beginning before you were yeah. famous yeah they thought christ it's gonna be like a punk band it's gonna be a <laughs> and it never was it was always the opposite so you did that Irony, that was your idea, irony. Yeah, but even if it's straight up, people get it confused anyway. One time Mary Ramsey and I were playing, when we play under John and Mary, and we were playing in Syracuse, and we were, there was this little sandwich board in front of the club that said, appearing tonight, John and Mary. And these three very attractive college girls walk by, kind of look at the sign, and one said, John and Mary, that sounds familiar. And one girl says, yeah, they did that song, Lemon Tree. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you had a hard time. Well, you can, you know, not everybody's on the right end of the bell curve, John. Yeah. So, you know, you have to you have to take into into account that the smart people will know <laughs> and the people who aren't so smart will Like Amy here, are you on the right side of the bell curve? I get up on the wrong side of the bed. Okay, back to John. <laughs> You've had such a great career though. You met all the stars, you met the Pogues. Yeah. And what was that like, meeting the Pogues? Were they fun or they were, they were a bunch of drunks, right? Well, it was late at night, so of course they were drunk. But we oh, were, of course, because we it was late at night, yeah. Yeah, we were just checking into... What, what the hell was that? It's the door. his doorbell. Oh, his doorbell, yeah. Go ahead. The cake's here. Someone's here? <laughs> Someone? It's probably Tom. Don't worry about Tom. Yeah, so what was it like meeting the Pogues? That must have been fun. You met Shane McGowan. Yeah, it was pretty good. He was good. So they were nice to you? Well, you're going to have me divulge the book before we write it? 
That's that's a very important chapter. Well, this is uh, this is this is an interview on uh, the YouTube, right? And uh, <laughs> so, let, yeah, let's not talk about your life and your career. Let's skip those two things. <laughs> well, let's not titillate. And let's not. T- no, you titillate. don't want to. You don't want to titillate anybody. Titillating is so Titillate. fun, though. <laughs> what? So, how did you feel this week then when Robin Williams hung himself? Did that did that matter to you? Um, you know, personally, I never really thought he was very funny. What? I mean, he was. He was obnoxious. He's he's a guy who never shuts up. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd see him on the Tonight Show, and he just it's kind of like you, Greg. Into his thing. <laughs> Is he kind of like me, John? She just said, "I'm no. not like that." He's no. trying to be listen. polite. No, no you he you. I listen. Don't sometimes I? Just, in public, yeah. Greg doesn't even talk. In public, yeah, oh, I don't yeah. even speak. I know. No way. It's yeah, true. right. I'm the quiet he, type. I'm, how many times have I? Is he said like to, an attitudey bitch sometimes? No, but I've <laughs> said to him on more than one occasion, Greg, you're not mad at me, are you? <laughs> yeah, you said, you, you, do you not like me anymore, Greg? What's going yeah, on? Because sometimes he goes through these. He's all moody periods. and stuff. Like he's got his period, or like, <laughs> like that kind. Of? No, he, he's he can be. Greg is kind of moody. Oh, I'm qu- I'm a quiet gentleman. I mean, I learned it from you, John. I spent a lot of time in your presence the last 25 years, and you know, we've had a lot of good times together. We went to two Bills games together. Yeah. And and whenever we went to the Bills games together, all the all the fans at Rich Stadium was like John Lombardo. No, it was they <laughs> eighty thousand people screaming your name. What's that like? No, they no. Didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, do, you, do you usually this show is hosted by Tim Seraki? You remember him? I do. Whatever. Now was he? Still Whatever happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I never see him anymore. He's. Well. He talked sports, and Ken killed him. Well, someone told me though that he was at the um, the Mohawk place. The, the Pete Perron thing. Remembrance. Pete Perron. What do you think of Pete Perron? Did you get along with him? Great man. Great man. I loved him. He never said you anything. You loved him. Mm. Was he like a really mm. Pete Perron? I liked him a lot, yeah. Because, you know, I heard a lot of things like people would say to me, he was a great guy, 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 because he's dead. And I said, did he like your band? They'd say, you know, he used to say, oh, no, get out of here, you know, to people. I mean, Irving Claus, he said, they, Irving Claus, Rob and Irving Claus, he didn't even like that band. I'm like, he's like, oh, he's a wonderful gentleman. Well, I got to say this about the Mohawk, though. It did change. There's like Mohawk phase one and phase two. And phase one was when Jack Hunter was booking it and stuff. And you're getting a lot of Canadian bands and a lot of like more rockabilly like Link Ray and things like that, you know? Question Mark and the Mysterians and all that. And then after a while, new, new people kind of became in charge and it became more like Buffalo's skateboard park bands, you know, that kind of thing. That was horrible. Well, it was different, different strokes for different folks. But you weren't into it, right? Were Not you? so much. In fact, Pete, when I'd see him occasionally, he'd go, how come you never come around anymore? He goes, don't they let you out of the sportsman? Because yeah. he knew that I was hanging there. You love the sportsmen, right? Well, you know. It's more your speed now, right? I mean, it's more older people. Old people. What do you think is going to happen with the new, the, the, the new bar that they're opening up? Well, it's all speculation, you know, at this point. They fixed it up kind of nice because they had to. Have you seen it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I mean, music-wise, I'd like to know what, what's going to happen. Well, you know, the guy who t- who's running it is the guy that ran Electric Avenue. Well, he Rick. Got, yeah, he's a he, nice gentleman. You we interviewed him, him yeah. at that. Yeah. Yeah. At Pete's Amy, we interviewed him. What did he say? Well, well, we hooked him up with another guy, and he said he promised that he was going to have he, that you one. You hooked guy. him up with another guy? Yes, I did. <laughs> what? 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 We were in that bathroom, that whole little bathroom what? thing that we were You hooked him up with another guy in the bathroom at, at the town ballroom? Oh, there were so many things. See, if you weren't busy being moody, you would know the cool things that happened at that party. Oh my God, that's that's not what I wanted to hear about Rick. The bathroom and hooking up with another guy in the bathroom. No, we got we got somebody a gig supposedly there. Maybe it was a little bit of BS. I don't know. Oh yeah, it might have been BS. Yeah, it's gonna be a great thing in the Mohawk place because Tim Seraki, who I just mentioned, he's gonna be bartending there. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, would you rather have me interviewing you or Tim Seraki? Oh, you. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's. Hey, Tom, you're here. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Say something. You, you, here we go. Let's, uh, let's touch up. Let's touch up. Over say, here. Oh. Yeah, I was just adjusting there you my go. headphones. There you there. go. Oh, that's enough for you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. John, so we can't talk about your life. Yeah, I think we, we can. You can. Oh, but... we can't talk about your life. So you were born a long time ago, and now you're living still, and you're a living legend. Is that you like, I'll like tell you an interesting living... thing about my birth. Yeah. When I was born, the doctor took one look at me and slapped my mother. <laughs> <laughs> 
life. <laughs> and then no, later, no. On, and then later on, you played sports. I did. And I, I was you, the last guy in Western New York to wear a leather football helmet. Oh my God! And this, I only did that. Coach made me wear it just because I was Italian. I think he didn't like me. So you had, but it was really because you had like an attitude problem, right? An anti-authority, anti-war, hippie. anti-war. Yeah, that was, you were that was so you're era anti-war war. during the Vietnam War, and your, your football coach said, "No, oh, yeah. nobody." There was a, you know, it was weird in the faculty, even in our high school. It's like there was maybe one fourth of the teachers even dared, you know, express their opposition to the war, and the other people, it was like love it or leave it. Really, because it was a, the Vietnam War. I mean, so many people were opposed to it, and you would think that you, you, it was down in Jamestown. Yeah. Maybe that so Jamestown is a conservative stronghold? Community. Well, I don't, you, I don't know how old you guys are, but the, I'm anti, 49. the I'm, anti-war movement I'm was sort of a cultural thing, too. It wasn't just politics. Yeah. Even, even priests and ministers were Hey, hey, put that away from your mouth. Away from your mouth. Sorry. Five-finger five five rule. Five finger rule. I, was, five okay. I was old enough in, when I, I was young, but I went to some of the protests because mm-hmm. my stepbrother was killed in Vietnam when I was in grade school. Oh, really? School. He's, on the, uh, he's on the wall in, he's on the in wall. Washington, D.C. We when we saw the wall, we looked him up and he was there. It says Paul's brother. No, it doesn't. <laughs> But he was the only guy. parenthetical on the wall. He was he was 19 years old, you know, and and I, I was a little kid, and I thought this kind of sucks, and yeah, so yeah. I started to go, and I would kind of like stay out of the the fray, but I would sit back and I'd watch the protesters. And well, it makes me think oh, of one the thing. University it's like of Buffalo. Yeah, it makes me think of one thing. Why weren't you in the war? Why didn't you fight? weren't you the right age? You I was the young. right age, but in How those days, believe it or not, they had a lottery. It was like a draft lottery. So oh, yeah, yeah. So Locked out? you had to draw, I mean, they drew a ball for every person. Really? <laughs> right, right, according to the birth on, date. And according to birth got date. It, yeah. And my number was 299. Uh-huh. Pretty lucky day for me, really. Because they were taking people up to about 185. Yes, yeah, yeah. something like that. So you got news on the TV, or they wrote in your letter? Yeah. They put it in the newspaper. And they wow. had it on television, it was, too. So it would say, like, number one, August 14th. Number yeah. two, December 9th. Number yeah. three. So, it was, you know, it was, they just pulled them in random. Yeah, and it was... So I kept reading right. and reading and reading and reading. Yeah. And getting a little bit more relief. And my number, September 30th, wasn't until uh, 299. Uh-huh. I remember watching wow. that Wow, so you just lucked out. Had you been planning to like go in there and, and pee your pants or something? Were you already planning to, what you were going to do to get out of it? Well, I, I was planning to be a uh, military cartoonist. A military cartoonist? Yeah, it's right. You're an artist. Because if you have spe- some specific skills, you know, they could say, well, draw the handbook. You know, uh, right, right. So, so you thought the art thing was going to get you out? It could. I mean, I know yeah. musicians. I know people that like went into the service and just got into the... In the band? Army band or the Air Force band. Wow. I, I remember my I remember my cousin's number was some like three fifty four something. Wow, yeah. But but he eventually uh, decided of his own uh, decision to go into the uh, into the service a year later. That's yeah. a mistake. To the Navy, you know. Yeah. But but he was he was in uh, a specialized labor, you know. Yeah. He was a plumber in that and you know, he, he got into service and he, he was on a ship and everything and yeah. you know this he, is the voice of Tom Stroh you're hearing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and he, he made a great career out of it. Yeah, and then, John, really you became a hippie in the 70s, right? You were one of those big hippies? No, I wasn't really so much of a hippie, really. No? I mean, I was in the hippie era, but I didn't listen to Grateful Dead or... You didn't listen to Grateful well, Dead Well, I heard it because over. it was always at parties and stuff. Didn't you go to Watkins Glen in 73? Yeah, but... Oh, you went! There you go! But I had a few friends. as We were all into, like, British glam rock music in the early 70s. So when everybody else had, like, flannel shirts and one-length hair... We had kind of like Rod Stewart haircuts and women's kind of. You were a mod. Well, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't was, mod. It, it was, was post mod. Like, post mod. Yeah. Post mod. Post modern like mod. Glam. So did you wear m- makeup like the? No, I never really wore makeup. Oh, do you wear makeup nowadays? No. You should. You have lovely oh. eyes. You have lovely eyes though. Bring it out. You can bring it out. You well, accentuate I've had, it. I have people. I've had people come up to me and say, "I just have one question. Why do you wear eye makeup?" And I go, "No, I don't." <laughs> 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 that is weird, yeah. wacky stuff. Yeah. Uh, what, about, what about Lee Stone? Are you yeah. like him? <sighs> I've been talking to him lately, and he's he's uh he 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 did our he he wrote our song. My Paul and I have a favorite romantic song. Mm-hmm. It's called Eating a Mormon. You ever hear that one? <laughs> <laughs> Eat, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Eating, yeah, that's our song. That's our song. <laughs> so I saw him last week, and he was all happy that that was our song. He said that you're, we're realists and we're not romantics, and he loves that about us. 
nothing about Lee Stoner then? Or is this for this? <sighs> this is on TV. I can't. You know, <laughs> what is this? Oh, I thought you were show. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something like he's a lovely gentleman. I, I enjoy uh, his work. He is. Oh, okay. There you go. That's all I was you know, wondering. I mean, but you know, I, I, I went up to him a while ago. I, I saw him in the pink. I hadn't seen him or talked to him in a long time. And he, and he was pretty buzzing and having a good time. And, and I said, Lee, you know, it's great to talk to you again. You know, I said, sometimes I get the feeling you don't really like me. He goes, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you were right. <laughs> What are you going to do? funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't you think there should be a, a giant Mike Meldrum painting at Nietzsche's? Because he was really Mr. Nietzsche. Don't you think he's not getting enough recognition? I would, Mike do, Meldrum? I would do it. Yeah, right. $1,400, right? No. How much would you charge? Three. Okay. $300. That's, I think that would be well worth it because if way, you had a painting by Joe. Raise that money. Huh? It would be ra way easier we to can, raise the We could raise the money for the, and give him the $300. I'd love to have a John, a John Lombardo painting of Mike Meldrum. That would be so wonderful for Nietzsche's, you know. You put a you you, you you don't really you, you don't really make a big deal of it when you do the paintings though. It's just like there's no is there your name really like in the little in the corner or something? You put like a J L or something or yeah. And I've always kind of even not wanted to do that because I think that a painting or anything or a, a collage or something like that. You want it to be the whole viewing area. You want to the viewer to just react to it, you know. And when you have this gaudy thing in the you know signature in the corner, it's like. Yeah, egotistical. right. That's, that's that's egotistical. You've never been an egotistical kind of guy. No. You've always been humble, right? Tried to be. And have you succeeded, John? Tried to. Have you have you succeeded? Is it a yes or a no? This is a yes or no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's around. in the eye of the beholder. It's in the eye. I find you humble. Thank you. I find that you know you're a, a gentleman and a scholar and a you're a road scholar, right? Didn't you go to England and uh, weren't you in? Uh, aren't you at the road scholar level like Chris Christopherson? Chris Christopherson is a Rhodes Scholar? Yeah. But, you know, I could be really? wrong about this, but Rhodes Scholar shouldn't be as impressed as we are because it only goes to athletes. Yeah, like like the guy from uh, Pat, uh, what's his name, from UC, U USC. Pat, well, Pat Hayden. Pat Hayden, that's well, right. this is showing and Chris, my ignorance. I know, you don't know anything about, you don't know anything about in, being, you don't know anything about the big universities and the colleges. I don't know, the, no, I know nothing about this stuff. I would ask you about the bills. Mm, I'm missing them right now, by the way. I know, I'm sorry. But, but I'm but, taping it. Yeah. I mean, I Ken is too on purpose. But you know the, that, that channel that's with the, um, whatever, the Time Warner Access Channel? They show it like two or three more times. Oh, there you go, Ken. Look at But preseason doesn't Can mean anything. It's not really worth it. Preseason <laughs> means a lot. Do, wow. Do you, like, do you like the idea of... Uh, do you like the idea of... <laughs> Put that away from your mouth. Away. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's... it's yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's got to stay... Yeah, right there. Got to stay right there. Is this okay? There. You're fine. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Yes. Do you, do you like the idea of bon, bon Jovi making a bid to buy the team? In that? Well, did you hear the latest today? Yeah. yeah about what Jim happened? Kelly. Yeah, what uh, about him? J they say Jim Kelly has been approached, or him and Bon Jovi are now like wanting to work. But then wow, that's Jill a... Kelly tonight on the news, she denied all of it, saying, Where is this coming from? We would uh -huh. never do that. Yeah. yeah, because why would Jim align himself with, the, with Bon Jovi taking it to the team to Toronto? But Jim, that would, well, then, well, then he never... might stave it off then. Maybe his idea. Oh, his idea is, is to is stave, it, stave John off. Yeah, he you know, you make a friend out of the enemy, and then you get to say where it stays. <laughs> he, he might keep it for like about four or five Sorry, years Ken, or I had something, and then... Uh, I don't know. Really you know, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. To, Nobody really you know, knows what's going on. Kelly has been contract. reported to uh, be talking with Galasano. Uh-huh. What about Pagula? He's Pagula doesn't need any partners. No, no, he's a, that's right. He doesn't need. He has he's the fracking. He's a, he's a, yeah, that's right. He's, he's a fracking. He's king. a fracking billionaire. He just made. <laughs> he just made like one point seven fracking. <laughs> um, what? How much billion? On this land sale. Land. Yeah, he did. You know what, Paul and I really enjoy. We've we've gone to see uh, ten times in the last year. It's our favorite local group. Is. John Lombardo and Joe Rosler together. If you know, I don't know if you noticed that we've gone to see you ten times in the last year. What's it like working with Joe? He's terrific. He's a great musician. He's like a virtuoso, isn't he? Is he like as as pleasant and and completely like positive as as he seems to be all the uh -huh. time? Yeah. Wow! So, so off that's stage, impressive. he does the whole the whole thing about how hey, great to see you. Oh, it's good to have having a good time. He does that off stage too. He's a very genuinely great guy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That well, is. I mean, it's not so much. I mean, people. Some people can be great, but not so positive. He's so positive that it it's like it's contagious. 
<laughs> and so I thought maybe mm-hmm. that was just part of his act. You're more somber than he are. He well, are, right? it's you know he goes through life with a sort of magical quality, which is the ability to like. So the leprechaun. Play music, <laughs> any kind of music. Yeah. You could say play, you know, play um, the theme from Exodus, and he could just sit there and play the theme from Exodus. Or if you say play. Um, you know, in my room by the Beach Boys, he could do it. Plus, he can sing. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, he's like at the Nelson Star level, right? Would you put him at the Nelson Star level? That I high? think he's more versatile. Oh, he's even more versatile than Nelson Star. Oh my God! I think a little bit. Wow. Yeah, he can do it all. I think it's. I like your act. I think you've gotten better and better over the years together. It's been growing and growing and building and building. And you have your and repertoire. When I, the, and you one of recent times, I, songs that you know. Yeah, and I love the repertoire. I love the the picks of all the deep cuts of the old classics, you know, bands like Small Faces. And the thing is, when I see you together now, it's almost like a comedy team. I don't know if you realize that. You How you guys play off each other now, like you're Simon and Garfunkel, there's a little bit comedic uh, interplay. Do you think about that? No. It, oh, you've noticed that, Paula, right? Well, because I think they have a, just uh, that kind of friendship. Yeah. And it comes off on, you know, when you're performing. What's Mary Ramsey like? <laughs> 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 what is that a leading misleading question? Is that a leading question or a misleading question? Um, she's great. Is she as ethereal as she seems? She seems like she's a wisp on the wind, like uh, floating through time and space. She can be a little on the wispy side. I'm not saying that in the pejorative sense, of course. No, 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 nor am I. No, it's kind of. I mean, like it's kind of like she's like a ghost come from beyond, and she's back. Does that well, make any sense? Well, people used to say that about Audrey Hepburn. Or She's Edith like an Audrey Piaf. Hepburn type. Yeah, I don't want oh, you to get yeah. the wrong. That's that's a good analogy for Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Delicate, Amy? Delicate flowers. Are You're you a, a delicate, delicate flower? flower? I'm a delicate flower? F- fuck no, I'm not a delicate flower. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I am. Speaking, but you're... speaking of which, <laughs> why did everybody go stand in line for an hour and a half to stand in front of a stinky plant that makes you want to throw up? <laughs> At the botanical gardens last week. Well, they they say this is the world's stinkiest Smelly plant. <laughs> Nobody it even smells wants like to rotting get, corpse. Right, it uh, smells like rotting flesh. Did, did no one go? even wants to no, get I close don't. to it. And people stood in line just to get their chance to go. Well, to you, s- like a koala bear, like going to look go, at the koala maybe bear. They, maybe they think it really doesn't. They can go to the east side. It's like I have to actually prove to myself that it does this. It's like if someone says, "Pull my finger." I mean, if you're over the age of 11, you know what's coming next, right? <laughs> right. Shit. I wouldn't stand in line to pull somebody's finger. Well, you would just do it if there was no line then. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh. It's a thing to do in private. A pri- in private when you pull yeah. someone's finger. But again, you know that's going to be unpleasant. So right. What's yeah. So why would you go here? Yeah. That's funny. I didn't even hear about that. That's yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, it was ugly, too. It didn't even look like a it plant. It looked like a giant pitcher plant. Yeah. It kind of looked like it, a yeah. cactus, right? That's crazy. A new From what I saw, it looked like one of those giant, those pitcher plants that the eat the they're kind of yeah. Those, they are, eat the, those like, are beautiful. Those pitcher oh. plants. So yeah, that's what it looked like to me. That I don't I don't know what I don't know what kind of plant it is. Pretty if weird. It is some sort of a Does, cactus or whatnot. So what's st- the what's the name of it? Does it have a name to it? Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, Tom Stroh's the Tom Stroh's plant. The Tom, <laughs> the yeah. Tom Stroh's plant. It's a Tom Stroh's plant. Yeah. The corpse plant. They named it after you. <laughs> corpse plant. Tom oh, oh, oh. Tom Strozuski. John, you did, you, just, uh, did you still go into the Pink Flamingo, or did you stop after the shooting? No, I'm still going there. Even though the guy got shot in front of there, the same spot you were standing a few days earlier? Yeah, the but exact... now it's easier to get a seat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the it's really, that it's not... was, that's the first thing that Greg said was, you know, I was standing I was next to John Lombardo, John Lombardo two days before that. Two days before. And that's right. Same spot. I, re- I remember yeah. you, you had announced to everybody, yeah, because I was you're next... an unsub. You would announce to everybody that you were going to the scene of the crime. Well, John and I were standing outside the little patio thing, and then we went to Nietzsche's, and then, then two days later, I'm hearing there's a sh- shooting right there, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. Maybe but they for the grace of God, you. it would have been John Lombardo. Well, the, gun came, the, gun, the shot came from a lo- pretty long way away. You know, it was like across the Is that really a mitigating factor, though? The guy still got shot in, in front of the bar, though. Did I mean, it doesn't matter how far it was. Only, even doesn't matter if it's... If Lee Harvey Oswald blows you know, JFK away, does it matter that it's far away? It's still... You know what I'm saying? More impressive. All I'm saying is, you know, there's a certain randomness to the universe, and you can you there know, is you can get killed in, when you least expect it. Right, and you can be interviewed on TV or YouTube when you least <laughs> when expect you least it. Expect when you least expect look, it. Look at all these young young kids that are, like get shot while they're doing their homework or something like right, that in right. their house. Did that ever happen to you when you're no. doing your homework at your house? No. no. Well, no, no, I no. mean, I, I remember I used to drive through um, the the. 
the fruit belt to get yeah. home from yeah and, and greg used to always say don't drive through there yeah. don't drive through there because you're going to get shot you can yeah yes. well i remember when i was a kid uh, there was a comedian i don't even remember who it was like on ed Sullivan or something he goes i'm not saying my uh my high school is rough uh, no i'm was, oh sorry i'm not saying my town was rough but my high school school newspaper had an obituary column <laughs> and everybody laughed uh, do you know what i mean funny, now it's not funny now it's yeah. real yeah, it is what, what high school did you go to? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have the obituary column, but it was Southwestern. Southwestern? Okay. Home of the Trojans. Mm. Ah. That's a condom, right, John? That's <laughs> a condom, it is. That's where they came from. <laughs> they named their team after a condom? That's bizarre. I'd hate to see that mascot. <laughs> it, just, it just means we were men of Troy. Oh, men of Troy. Ah. And what's Troy? That's the place? Troy was one of those city states in ancient Greece. Oh, in ancient Egypt, right? Greece. Greece, Egypt, Egypt Greece. whatever. It's, it's near Egypt, but it's it's you know, you gotta go farther Made famous in the Iliad. Yeah. East. Yeah. They tells the story of the Trojan horse. Sorry, I haven't read that one. I'll, read, classic, a, I'll read it. I'll read it to you when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> the most repaired thing we ever had in our school was uh, we had a Trojan horse. You had a Trojan uh -huh. horse. The uh, the shop people made this made gigantic it. replica of it, and the day before every football game, it would be destroyed by vandals, and then they'd rebuild it, and then the next week there'd be another football game and it'd be wrecked. Wow, that's weird. You know, it really made me happy. Too much alcohol in Jamestown. Well, I there hear. wasn't anything else to do in those days. <laughs> High school football was a big deal. Yeah, it was. It still is. It still is in Southwestern, yeah. 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 You know, it made me really feel good, though. Uh, a year ago, you told me that I have now officially vaulted in your, into your top 30 male friends. And I want to say thank you for telling me that, because I've been, I've been happy ever since. When I made your top 30 male friends, I was like, you, remember, you probably don't remember saying it because you have so many friends. But you said, no, no, I you said, oh, yeah. And I was like, wow, top 30. That's <laughs> 30. amazing. <laughs> not female. There's not, not, not to include all the females, but top. I mean, I was like number 30. That was pretty good. Well, the reason I brought up the, did you remember the context? Because I was saying that if I took like my 30 best friends, uh -huh. male friends, the amount of children we've brought into the world, all 30 of us, is like less than seven. <laughs> I brought zero in. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. The best are working. Every, That's pers right. every person in my band has zero children. Right. Yeah. Wow. Good folks. Right. Those are right. Kent Weber. So those Trojans really do work. <laughs> That's yeah, that's true. That, that's right. We had we have no children. That's so. That is. Very few of my friends have children. No, or, or it could be a matter of fate. You never know. Sorry, Tom, what did you say? Or it could be a matter of fate. I'm sorry, Tom, what did you say? <laughs> I, think, I think they're really working at not having yeah. kids. Uh -huh. Not really. They're committed. Well, it's a bit more, you know, it's kind of, as you get older, you kind of look back with some degree of regret. You have regret? I don't. Uh, <laughs> Kenny and I don't. <laughs> like, no. I only have regret when I, when I get sick. That you don't have a and there's kid. Nobody even there to. All oh, right. <laughs> to do any, you know. All right. Well, you can just call Paula and myself next time you're sick, and, and we'll, we'll come, come over. over. We'll come oh. over and, and we'll help you out. Say that. We'll we'll both, make no, a note of that. we're not. We're not kidding. We'll both what do you wear mean nurses' we all, uniforms. We'll both wear <laughs> nurses' uniforms. <laughs> what I'm saying is, it, it Greg is, great. is a candy striper. <laughs> In the last few years, I've been. Uh, can I get you your Nyquil? Teaching guitar to little ki to younger kids. Right. And so, and when I see them in the context of their families, you know, it's pretty rewarding and it's you know. it's it's like it's it's really it, it's like joining the it's like joining the army and being there for the rest of your life you know children last forever I thought when I had my daughter because I was young I thought that I would be have to be a mother for 18 years yeah and you're a mother forever and you don't realize it until like it starts getting to the point where you you know you're just a mother forever and you're there's always concern there's always worry there's and then yeah. then there's grandkids and then you yeah but it's fun for john isn't it fun being without you know having all that responsibility of the kids and the wife and all that that must feel good you're like a bachelor playboy right <laughs> uh you're a bachelor playboy correct like warren Beatty was when he was young right you like that kind? Do you call when you call women on the phone? Do you say, "What's new, Pussycat?" No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, First that's, of all, you don't call women anymore. You have to text, text them. them. You text women. All. I know. I've always seen you texting now. You have to. You've so, grown into some young guy told me that he goes, "They'll never pick up the phone," but he goes, "Text them." You, boom, and it's right back there. It's like broads love they're texting. There, they're staring at their phone, waiting to see who texts. Right, broads love that. 
This is the modern world, buddy. It is modern. Yeah. I even text frequently. Yeah, because you're texting chicks. You, ever, you texted me, though, recently, so that was a first. Woo! Cause I, I could tell I was really still in the top 30. <laughs> <laughs> it was the candy stripe All right, uniform. But John, I want to thank you for being so nice. Thanks. You're very nice to stay here, even though Gwen Keir is stiff. I didn't even I know you were I doing hope, a show. I'm that's sorry, that's why I'm so unprepared. You were so great, and I, I'm sorry. that. But thanks for being a gentleman and a scholar. Thanks. All right. Oh, yeah.